Hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to take my Reolink NVR, the network video recorder, the actual unit that is the center of my entire home video security system, and I'm going to upgrade its internal hard drive from the two terabyte drive that it came with up to a six terabyte drive, which is the maximum that this unit is supposed to be able to support. Well, at least internally, and as I'll show you later, you can put in an additional six terabytes if you connect it through an eSATA cable. I won't show that here, but I'll mention how that takes place. And I've shown eSATA and how to hook it up in a previous video of mine. But if you want to see how this all works out in the end and what additional uh, configuration I have to do to get this to work, stick around to a little bit later in the video. So as you can see here, I still have it running. It's got the green power light on, and this is the disk access. So the thing is up and running on my network. So I'm going to have to go in first into the software and do a full shutdown. Okay, I've gone into the real link in VR settings, and I want to take a look at the storage before I do anything else to it. So click on this one in the left hand menu. And as you can see, it has uh, 1.848 gigabits, which is just under two terabytes, which is the formatted size of the drive. So I don't have to do anything here. It is currently up and mounted, but what I'll do is I'll come down here and shut off the power of the device and uh, you know see what happens with that. It should go completely down. I'll also disconnect the power cord, and then from that point, I'll start upgrading the hard disk. Okay, now it's powered off. As you can see, no more green power light or hard disk access. So you have to start by removing five screws. I'll go ahead and disable, disconnect these cables, as long as I'm at it here, so that they're not in the way. So there's two on each side and one in the back. I'll start with the one in the back. They can be a little bit tough to do the first time but they should just come right off. And then the cover should just sort of slip back a little bit and come right off. And as you can see, there's only room for one hard drive in here. As I said before, it'll support up to a six terabyte, as long as it's a surveillance type. There's a Seagate surveillance. My replacement one just happens to also be Seagate surveillance, but this one is six terabytes rather than the two terabytes that this one is. It also has an eSATA connector in the back where you can connect up another six terabyte drive through that connector. One thing I did notice here is it looks like it has a place here for a fan. I read that uh, some of the older models came with a fan. It's a 40 millimeter, by the way, I did measure that. And there happens to be a connector here. So I'll test that all out and get myself one of my spare fans. And in another video, I'll show trying to put a fan on here because it'll be nice to get some airflow through here even though it's theoretically supposed to be fine I like to have things really cool so the first thing I have to do is disconnect actually I don't even have to take them all out it looks like it's sort of angled screw holders so if I just sort of loosen these enough so I loosen them about halfway that way it doesn't fall out on me Looks like the drive has, let me see if I can squeeze it out of here. Shift it over that way until the screw's clear. And then just sort of lift it out carefully. And as you can see, it's got standard uh, hard disk controller cable and data cable. So I'll disconnect this. It looks like it's two separate cables. Here's the SATA power, standard SATA power and SATA data. And that's it. Save this. I can use it as a backup. Or if I have a, extra enclosure, I could put that extra two terabytes here on the eSATA. We'll see how I do with that. Let me take these screws though, because I'm going to need to reuse them. Let me take these screws off of here. Put this aside. Let's take the replacement. It's a bit heftier. It's a thicker drive, as you can see here. So I'll put them in the same place. Put them in only about halfway, so I can get this thing back in the same way that I took it out. That should be good. Let me connect the cables back up again. So this way is the SATA data. And then this one looks like the SATA power. Snaps right on. Just notice something here. Don't know if it's a problem or not, but this hole, the holes on these two drives don't line up. This one had closer ones to it, maybe it's because it's a thinner drive. This one does not have holes here and here, so I'm gonna have to take these out and depend upon two screws, I'm afraid. I'll see if I can do something about it after I get it in there, but it looks like I have to do it this way. 
got to secure with just two screws. Make sure none's in the way here. Now it looks like it's clear on everything. That's surprising because the other than the size, the two drives showed all other markings to be exactly the same. Oh well, it looks like it's secure. I don't plan on bouncing this around, but it's something to keep in mind that it's only being held with two screws. So before I actually put the cover back on, I'm going to hook it up. Let me hook up one of the cameras and all of the other connections, the mouse and the power monitor and the network itself. Okay, let me get the power cable connected here. That's the final step. And then power it on, and we'll see if it comes up. I hear the drive spinning up, so that's a good sign. And I see the flash screen from Reolink. And we're up. I have one camera showing, the one underneath the table here. Click on that, and I see, well, this, it's duplicated for some reason. I'll have to rearrange the camera there because I unplugged one. But it looks like it's up, but there's no hard drive. The actual hard drive disk is not working at this point. Let me go into the settings again. You've got to have at least one camera open. Go into storage and it's zero, zero. So it needs to be formatted. Let's click format. I hear it doing some noise on the hard drive. Format succeeded. And now we have a size. Now we have uh, 5.574 gigabytes. And free space is 5.45 gigabytes. If I look at the drive, it's now accessing the drive with the red light. So we look like we're up. We'll check later to see if it actually is recording to it. But for now, I can shut it down again and put the cover back on. And then we'll be done. Let me come in here and shut it down again. I'll come down here and shut off the power of the device. Power off the switch back here once you see the message. Give it a few seconds to cycle down and then disconnect the power connector. Okay, let's get the cover back on. Let's get the five screws back on. And we're done. I'll power back on and see what we get. I hear it cycling up. Now, of course, I have these two extra screws that I have to deal with. I'll have to save those and figure a way to secure that a little bit more, maybe with some double-sided tape at some point in the future. 